I've been building mobile and web applications for almost a decade for corporations and more recently as a solo developer. And every time I start a new project, I basically follow the same exact path. Now, obviously working on a multi-team corporate project is a bit different. However, I've pulled the most valuable lessons from the corporate world and I've adapted them for my own solo development. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my simple five-step framework for designing, building, and deploying your own apps in 2025. Now the very first step is coming up with an idea and I can't give you a magic formula for that but honestly if you click this video there's a pretty good likelihood that you might already have an idea in mind. That being said I think the best way to come up with ideas is to simply let them come to you naturally. Now there's this book that I love that I read a few years ago called Wired to Create. There's a chapter in there about mindfulness and there's a story about a writer who carries a notebook everywhere they go jotting everything down, thoughts, emotions, random observations. And in this chapter, the author talks about how being mindful and consciousness of your surroundings and navigating through life with a curious eye can help you spark ideas. Now, I'm not suggesting you carry a notebook around with you everywhere as an app developer, you know, but when the idea strikes, maybe pull out your phone and write it in your notes. However, remember that coding and building apps is a very creative process. The more intentionally you move through life and you analyze sort of what's happening around you, I think the more likely you are to spark ideas. And trying to force an idea usually never works. And the best ideas typically come when you're least expecting it. Now, another huge tip and something that I constantly tell software developers trying to build portfolio projects or come up with new ideas is to build something that you truly understand. When you know the niche of the thing that you're building around and the use cases inside and out, it's almost impossible to stop coming up with feature ideas and improvements. And then if you have a overload of ideas, the challenge then becomes designing what's essential and what's not, which is a very good problem to have. Now the second step, and this is a step that a lot of people skip, but I think it is probably the absolutely most important step, and that is building a tech plan. I think too many developers just dive straight into the code without outlining the bigger picture. And a good tech plan goes a long way and way beyond just what's this idea about, right? I think spending even just an hour putting together a tech plan is one of the highest leverage things that you can do. I would say that most developers like to just open up their terminal and start, you know, vibe coding it out. But that's sort of like deciding to build a house without a blueprint in mind, right? You get something up, but you're almost guaranteed to run into major issues later down the road. If you're interested, I've put together a comprehensive tech plan template that you can download for free. The link is in the description, and it's the exact format that I use for my own projects, and it'll walk you through everything that I'm talking about here in this video. So grab it from the link in the description and use it for your next build. Now let's talk about choosing a tech stack as a solo developer, and this goes hand in hand with creating your tech plan. I personally think the smartest thing that you could do is pick something that is highly supported and widely adopted because it will help you get your idea out there as quickly as possible. Now for me and the projects that I work on, that typically means JavaScript or TypeScript and then React. Now personally, they're not my absolute favorite tools as a developer and I don't know if I necessarily agree with how JavaScript has sort of just became the default go-to for everything, but the reality is you can get a lot done with this one language and this one core library. You can build mobile applications with React Native, web apps with just the regular vanilla React library. You can build desktop apps and even backend services with Node.js. It's one of the most used languages, if not the most used language in the world, and it's simply one of the fastest ways to go from idea to finished product across multiple different platforms as quickly as possible. So now let's talk about step three, which is the design phase. So if you followed the step-by-step -step outline in my tech plan document, you know it is very important to get pretty granular here. You should break down each core feature and map out exactly how it should work from a user interface perspective. And personally, I start the design process before I ever touch a piece of code simply because it helps me visually map out the code that I will need to write in the end result that I'm aiming for. There's a lot of tools that you can use for design. When I first started, there was this program called Sketch that I used quite often. 
You can use things like Figma, which is very common in the professional world. You could use Microsoft Paint if you're feeling frisky, or you could even use good old pen and paper. Now, when it comes to app development, design can be an entirely separate career path, and that is because it is very challenging and requires a lot of thought and skill. And that is why I personally outsource this part of the process. And there's a few and relatively inexpensive ways to handle outsourcing design. The first is simply sourcing ideas from other applications. So you can look at how they handle the UI and UX. You can study their flows and then you can adapt what works for you. The second thing you can do is hire a designer on freelance sites like Fiverr or Upwork. You can find some incredibly talented designers for just a few hundred bucks. And I promise you that investment will be well worth it. They'll design a few key features for your application and you can sort of use those as a blueprint for how the rest of your application should look. In fact, this is exactly what I did with my most recent app, State of Health, and the designs turned out phenomenal. It saved me a ton of time and a ton of effort. And the next option that is pretty cheap and one of my personal favorites is leveraging AI tools and no-code platforms like Wix Studio. I've always been very pro tool that make your life easier. And that's because my philosophy is if something can save you time, energy, and frustration, I'm all for it. And Wix Studio does exactly that. Wix Studio is an absolute powerhouse of a platform. You can build and design websites extraordinarily fast using their AI tools and the countless built-in features that they've packed in. And I'm not just saying that, I've actually used it for my own application, State of Health, where I recently designed an entire landing page in Wix Studio. So here's the thing when it comes to your applications. First impressions matter, and they matter a lot. When you have a mobile application, a landing page isn't just a nice to have, it's an absolute must to have. Not only because you will be required to have a privacy policy hosted on a valid website URL, which Wix Studio can help you set that up in minutes, but because it's one of the easiest ways to help with SEO and marketing. So let me walk you through exactly how I designed this landing page and a full content management system in just a couple hours using Wix Studio. So I started with the Wix Studio Visual Sitemap AI Generator. And this is a full-blown AI-powered tool that takes in a series of prompts that you give it and generates an entire site structure for you. Now for my prompts, I put in things like mobile app for the business name, I added details about what my app does and explained exactly what I wanted the landing page to look like. I gave it clear, detailed instructions and Wix Studio came back with all the important sections for my landing page, which is a home section, a privacy policy, a blog setup, all laid out and ready to customize. Then from there, I started to refine. I used Wix Studio's pre-built wireframes as a base. I tweaked the layouts and then I used their mobile responsive AI tool to fix the mobile and tablet views of my landing page. I uploaded my own images and assets in the placeholders that Wix Studio generated. And before I knew it, I had a very clean, professional looking page complete with smooth parallax scrolling effects, which I'm a huge sucker for. Then there's one of my favorite features, which is the design toolkit. I wanted a way to showcase user reviews of my mobile app without making the page feel static or boring. So I grabbed one of their gradient tech parallax scrolling components, customized the background colors to match my brand, and then dropped in real app store reviews. And it instantly made my page much more engaging and added that bit of social proof. Now Wix Studio isn't just about design, it's also a fully blown content management system. Inside the dashboard, I can create, manage, and edit blog posts without touching a single line of code. And blog posts are absolutely huge when it comes to SEO. And that's because each posting is just another opportunity for someone to find my app through search engines. For example, I wrote a blog post about how I built my app's exercise database. And then with Wix Studio SEO Assistant, I got step-by-step -step guidance on how to improve it, such as what I was doing right, what needs work, and then how I could fully optimize my blog post. So at the end of the day, I don't just have a static landing page for my mobile app. I have a full-on marketing engine. And I think this is something that every solo developer should have. I would say it's one of the highest impact 
lowest effort things that you can do to get more eyeballs and downloads on your project. And to top it all off, publishing the site was ridiculously easy. I picked my domain, I clicked publish, and in under 60 seconds, the site was live. So if you wanna check it out, you can visit stateofhealthapp.com to see exactly how I built it. And if you're building your own app, click the link in the description to try out Wix Studio and streamline your design and development process with some of the best AI powered website building tools out there. And huge thank you to Wix Studio for sponsoring this video. Okay, so now let's dive into step four of my process, which is project management and coding. So everything that I just went through, planning, creating your tech plan, and then going through the design process might sound like a lot, but in reality, it should only take you a day or two at most. Now, one more thing before I actually start coding is implementing a simple project management strategy. So I take my designs and then I break down that work into tickets, which is just basically small and deliverable chunks of work like create UI for macro tracking screen. It's a way to turn this big and overwhelming task of building an entire project into manageable pieces that I can actually complete within a reasonable time frame. And that process alone is a huge part of software development, even in the professional world. You take this monumental task, you break it down into smaller multi-hour or multi-day pieces, so you're not overwhelmed and you have small deliverable action items that you can take action on. Now the large corporations do this with a lot more formal structure. However, as a solo developer, I just break things down into whatever way makes the most sense to me. And that typically looks like creating enough small chunks to cover about a week or two of work. And then I start coding after I finish my week or two of work, I revisit the process again. I think it's good to not plan too far ahead because things change, it can be boring, but it's still incredibly valuable and gives you a way to knock out a series of small wins when building out your project. There's a ton of project management tools out there like Jira, you can use GitHub, but for small projects, a simple Notion Kanban board works great. And I've also included one in the tech plan, which is again linked in the description. Now, once I've planned out enough tasks to keep me busy for about a week or so, that's when I start coding. So I follow a simple Git flow process of making a feature branch, doing all my work on that feature branch, and then merging that branch into my main branch. Sometimes I'll even open up a pull request just for myself so I can visualize all the changes in GitHub and then give a quick code review and self review uh, of my code before actually merging it. Now this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't talk about how AI fits into my workflow. And as a solo developer, I rely on AI a lot. And honestly, at this point, I don't see a good reason not to. In fact, I built out an entire backend system recently where AI did about 95% of the work. Now it wasn't as simple as telling a LLM to make me a backend with JavaScript and not make any mistakes, right? It was about a series of 100 prompts that ended up getting me to my final result, which I think is just really important to understand. Now there's a ton of AI powered tools out there. So I mostly stick with a mix of a single dedicated AI editor, my regular code editor with GitHub Copilot, and then a standalone LLM. So that's my AI stack, I guess. And my usual process is like this. If I need a full project context, then I'll use an AI editor because it understands the relationship between different files and services in my code base. If I just need to think through a problem at a high level, I'll usually have a conversation with good old GPT. And then when I'm working through a problem that AI can't reason or understand, you know, that's when I pop open my regular code editor with Copilot and solve the issue there. Now, the one thing to stay cautious about is keeping your code base organized in a way that's scalable and modular. You can even use AI to help you with this. You can just prompt the LLM to refactor your code, to restructure it and make it more modular. And the reason that this matters is because vibe coding with AI can quickly turn your project into a uh, tangled, unmaintainable spaghetti mess. Now it might work at first, but it will absolutely become a nightmare to maintain later on. So make sure you're staying mindful of that. Now for the fifth and final step, which is deploying. Once you've done enough vibe coding, you'll eventually be ready to deploy your project. And how you do that really depends on what you're building. For mobile apps, there's a few different options, but because I stick with the React ecosystem with React Native, 
One of the biggest advantages that I get is access to Expo. Expo is essentially a toolkit and service layer for React Native applications that handles a lot of the heavy lifting in building, testing, and deploying your application. It's very cheap and it saves me a ton of time when it comes to publishing my app directly to the App Store or Google Play. And it comes with a bunch of other useful features that make development so much smoother. Alternatively, you can just build your app binaries manually Manually and then upload them to the app stores directly. This is more technical, but it gives you a bit more control and it's free. And when it comes to web applications, you have a ton of options here, especially in the React ecosystem. Vercel makes deploying your front end super easy. And with tools like Supabase, you can host your own database and even generate API endpoints using that platform, which can remove the need for building a custom backend application by hand. However, the trade-off with these pre-built solutions and backend as a service vendors is that they give you faster deployments. They handle things like security, scaling, and monitoring for you, but you're giving up some control and you can end up getting locked into their ecosystem. And with the variable pricing models that a ton of these backend as a service vendors have, being locked into a single vendor can feel tough and be uncertain, especially if your app starts to get a lot of traction which is why I personally prefer using a VPS. It is basically a slice of a real server where you can run both your front end and back end in a single place. And the big bonus of a VPS is cost control. You're usually only ever paying a fixed monthly price. So if your app suddenly you know, grows in users, you get a ton more traffic, you're not hit with unpredictable bills. You might need to upgrade your server eventually, but even then it is still a fixed cost. Now again, everything has trade-offs. So the downside of using a VPS is that it can be much more technical to set up and manage. You'll need to handle things like SSL certificates yourself, uh, domain registration, you know, routing, and then making sure all your services are installed and running properly. Now that can be tricky, but the upside is you have full control of everything. And generally speaking, VPS hosting is pretty cheap. You can get one for as little as $5 a month just to get your project off the ground. And it is exactly what I use, like I said, for my own personal projects. That's because to me, a VPS is a simple and straightforward solution that gives me full control you know, for better or for worse. And when it comes to deploying, keeping the process as simple and painless as possible for yourself is what matters the most. So anyways, there's countless ways to deploy your application, but my biggest recommendation is to avoid getting locked into a single vendor. If you do use some sort of deployment vendor or backend as a service system like Supabase or Firebase, Make sure you're separating the concerns in your code base. So when you switch providers later on, that is a painless thing to do. The last thing that you wanna do is insert Firebase queries scattered across 400 files in your project, because that will be a total pain to re remove and replace with another vendor. Anyways, thank you for making it this far in the video. I hope it was helpful and I will see you all in the next one.